Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. This is Gatch Monkey here. Today we're having a look at this 2024 Infinity QX50. It is the highest trim level you can get for this price around $62,000 and this is a pretty uh, confusing car specifically for me when I think about uh, the com competition that's out now. This is starting to feel a little bit dated to me. The design, the exterior design looks fresh still today even though it came out in 2019 but we're going to talk about this design in this video the front side and rear the interior i would personally go for the sport trim which blacks out all the chrome all around the car and then of course we're going to take this for a drive but before we do that let's pop the hood and let's see what's powering uh, this 2024 qx50 autobiography under the hood, we do have a 2-liter inline 4, putting out 268 horsepower, 280 pound-feet of torque. It is connected to a CVT gearbox, and for $62,000, that is not something that I want to have. And specifically, when you think about Infinity as a sporty brand, CVTs, they're just factually not sporty transmissions so that's what we have in this car we have all-wheel drive 0 to 60 takes about 6.9 seconds fuel economy comes in at 22 city 28 highway and the price for this one as tested including destination comes out to $61,610 and that is where the problems start for me because as I said we have a lot of competition in this uh, segment but the overall styling, as I said before, is just clean. It looks very nice and very modern still today, even though it is a six-year-old design right now. So starting up front with the front-end design, you can see the fluid lines that we have in the hood here. Love the design. This comes in slate gray. Is this color? I feel like slate gray or this battleship gray is a color that a lot of manufacturers are using right now. I think it started with the Nardo gray with Audi maybe, maybe even before that, but we do have the same type of color here. It has a blue clay gray tone to it. Beautiful looking headlights, full LED. We have a nice LED indicator right here. Beautiful LED daytime run light and full LED high beams and, and low beams as well. With the uh, functional air vent here, I'm glad to see that this is actually functional. We have some uh, LED fog lights down here and the overall styling for the front end looks very uh, Asian when it comes to styling, meaning a lot of lines all over the front end, but it somehow works. It reminds me a lot of a Mazda when you look at the grille design in combination with the headlight designs. So this being the autobiography uh, trim level, we do have a lot of chrome here. This is a big chrome frame growing, going all around the grill. We have a massive, look at the size of the Infinity logo here in the front end. And this also uh, houses the radar for the adaptive cruise control that also comes with lane assist. You have the front mounted camera up here, more silver pieces down here, not really chrome, but I do like that everything here is functional. You have functionality here for the vent here, the main grille, and also on the sides. Overall, I do like the design of Infinity. It's supposed to be a sporty brand, but I don't feel any sort of sportiness coming from this specific QX50. Not when it comes to the exterior, not when it comes to the driving and not to the interior as well. Even though the interior is absolutely beautiful, it's starting to feel dated. And we're gonna talk more about that, why I feel that way in a minute. Now coming around to the side view here, we have 20 inch wheels, 255 millimeter wide tires all around the car. The design for the wheels look decent, but again, I would personally go with the blacked out sport trim that also blacks out the wheels and makes it feel what I feel Infinity is all about. It makes it feel sportier. I wish this intake or graphic here had some functionality to it. Maybe open this piece up, more chrome going here, silver uh, caps for the side mirrors, LED indicators with the 360 camera mounted right here underneath more silver going around the greenhouse here and this is a typical infinity line with this section in the uh, d pillar in this case it feels like the designer sketched this up and then sneezed a little bit and just made this little curvature right there it definitely creates some character for the design it makes it feel unique in a side view you have chrome door handles as well you open it up by putting your hand behind this and you lock it by pressing this small little button on the outside 
like that we have a little bit of body color in the door handles as well so it's not too much chrome going on further down low you have a silver piece all the way at the bottom and the doors extend all the way down and the reason for that is so you don't get dirt on your pants when you're stepping out of this because this entire piece is covered up by the door so it's not going to get dirty regular old fuel cap and we have a full panoramic sunroof up top that is absolutely huge in addition to these roof rails that is silver in this case as well now coming around to the rear end this is uh i wouldn't say this is my favorite view for the qx50 it looks great from uh, this view but i think the front end actually looks very very tight as well specifically if you go with the as i said sport package the blacks out everything around the car now coming around to the rear here it looks pretty beefy it has a nice plantedness to it with the big bulging shoulders planting the car nicely on the ground we have a uh, wiper in the middle of the window would like to see this on a brand luxury sporty brand like infinity i want to have this be hidden underneath the spoiler up top you have a brake light right there and a big Infinity logo with the Infinity spelled out. QX50 in chrome, full LED taillights. These taillights, I think these were almost ahead of their time because it's full LED from 2019 with a big, thick, juicy LED here going into a much thinner piece, creating a lot of dynamic movement in the uh, taillight design itself. Full LED uh, indicator as well as a reflector piece right on the side and the line flow in the back reminds me a lot of the line flow that we have at the front end a lot of lines going on but somehow infinity makes it work i like this small little black trim piece in this area because this carves out some of this volume and it makes it feel a lot sportier than it actually is all the way down low at the bottom we find the dual exhaust pipes and i like when uh, companies do this i want to have this come back as a trend to show off the exhaust pipes specifically when we have a sportier brand like infinity so let's open up the table there is a button underneath the N logo and letter so of course power assisted being sixty-two thousand dollars. that's what you want very brown in here if you open this up you have some stuff underneath here i'm not really sure what is underneath here it looks to be a tow hook of some sort if you need to tow stuff you have all the stuff here in this compartment let's fold this back down you can fold the rear seats by uh, pushing or uh, pulling these levers on each side and that's pretty much it for the rear uh, for the uh, trunk space it's not a, a huge amount of space back here because you can see how the line of the rear end carves in here and cuts out some of this volume that we have in the rear let's close this back up and let's have a look at the interior because it's a very unique looking interior that's for sure we have three screens in there we have one up top that is lower resolution in the infotainment screen we have one down low that is a little bit higher resolution and we have a small screen in the gauge cluster now this, if you open this up does this scream sporty to you with the materials used here and the color uh, color combination it does not scream sporty to me it feels almost a little uh grandma-ish if i had to put a word for it it feels like people who would buy this specific car are 50 years old or older specifically with this type of spec that we have here but other than that i mean if we just look at the craftsmanship they went into this interior i think infinity has done a fantastic job just look at this blue suede uh, material here that continues if we close the door later on you can see that it continues into this piece part of the dash and then it contrasts with the brown leather up top in addition to this silver trim piece going around the air vent so the quality here and this feels to be some sort of wood so we have a lot of different materials in here making it look very luxurious but again that is what makes me confused about the, this car is infinity to me it's more angle towards sportiness and with a splash of luxury uh, if you compare it to the uh, brand it's based on Nissan we have both sound system here as well and these seats absolutely gorgeous looking seats heated and ventilated seats with again a lot of contrast going on here diamond stitching in the middle with nice bolstering on the side as well of course these are power assisted so let's jump in here and let's check a, take a closer look 
at the interior of the QX50. Let's fire this up. You have the start button right at the bottom. And this is what I'm talking about, the two different screens. You have one eight inch screen up top, and then you have a lower screen that is seven inches. And this has a much higher resolution than the one that we have up top. This feels like it came out in 2015 or something like that with the native uh, navigation system that you can see here. The good news here is though that you do get a wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is great. That is definitely something that I wanna see in this car because of the old style for the native systems that we have in here. You can control the infotainment screen by using this dial right here at the, uh, at the uh, armrest. And that is how you go into the map. For example, you can go back and check out some functions right here. You can also pop up the camera. If you want to do that, you have the 360 view. Very, very grainy design for the backup camera and the 360 view. This is something that I don't think for today in 2024, you pay $62,000, we need to have a better system than this. And this is, again, what makes this car feel a little dated in my opinion, specifically when you compare it to the competition. Two vents up top here, and still this beautiful texture and material going on here, but this feels very old school to me. This overall styling with all these curvatures going on here, the radiuses in every single little feature, this makes it feel like a mid 2000s design. And that is the reason why it feels so old, in my opinion, at least, when you jump into the interior. Heated and ventilated seats in three different levels. Love that we still have these arrays of physical buttons. This is something that I hope they will not move away from in the next generation of the um, QX50. You have some settings here. This is, you have two different settings buttons here. This is also pretty interesting. If you press, you have one setting button there, and this is for the car settings. So this is where you customize whatever you want inside of the car itself. And then if we go back and press this setting, this is for the audio settings. So two different settings buttons. You need to know which one controls either the audio system or the uh, settings for the car itself. Let's turn off the hazards here. Further down, we do have the uh, controls for the radio settings. You also have a CD slot. And this is another detail that definitely dates this car. I don't think any new cars come with CD slots in 2024 or 2025, but this one being from 2019 still has that. Thankfully, they added some modern features here, such as the wireless charging pad in a very steep angle. It also has this rubberized feel to it, so this phone is not gonna slide all over the place. One USB-C, regular USB, and you have this cigarette outlet there as well. Two cup holders, and let me show you what the key looks like. It looks like a pretty normal uh, Nissan key, I would say. You have auto start, lock, unlock, hold to open the trunk, and you have the panic button down here. Glad that we see a little bit different here with the Infinity logo up top, and the back just looks like a plastic piece of generic key. Now we have the start button here, let me show you. This is the gear selector, putting it into reverse, press this side button right on the side, move it backwards into reverse. Again, gonna pop up this very grainy reverse and 360 camera, but at least it comes with it. That is something that I don't think it came with in 2019. So I'm glad to see that they updated that. You have four different drive modes by using this little toggle. You have personal, sport, standard or eco and personal meaning that you can adjust and customize your own personal driving um, uh, drive mode parking brake here with the auto hold beautiful again armrest with the leather in contrast with the blue suede open this up you're gonna see that we do have some storage down here no connectivity whatsoever it is it has some felt lining to it though so it feels still very upscale this interior even though it has this dated feel to it. Now looking at the seats, talked about these seats uh, quickly uh, earlier, and I do like the design of them. I like the white color because I do think this goes well with the top of the line auto autobiography uh, trim level, which is supposed to be the luxurious one. These definitely look luxurious with the stitching on the side, the contrast, uh, thick headrest up top, thick seats overall, and proper bolstering on the sides, heated and ventilated, as I said earlier. Now, this steering wheel, very brown looking steering wheel. We have the same brown coming in on top. And this again, just makes it feel, I guess, a little bit more luxurious than if we were to just have it be completely black. The gauge cluster has a small little display in the middle that you can customize using these two buttons on the side here. So that is the only customization you have 
for the screen in the middle. I like to keep it on the navigation just like that because it looks cleanest. You have the fuel economy, radio settings, some safety settings here, and some audio information there as well. Uh, analog tachometer, analog speedometer, and if we put it, let's put it in sport and let's listen to what this sounds like from the inside. So it's, it sounds decent, it doesn't sound too great and not too bad either. Now looking at steering wheel, you do have paddles here, still don't understand uh, the functionality of paddles with a CVT gearbox, but you do have them here if you want to just play around with that. You have the uh, indicator stock on the left side and the washer stock right here on the right side. In addition to these three screens, we also have a, a head-up display up front showing you the speed limit and the speed you're currently doing. Controls for the light settings are located on the left side of the steering wheel. And as I show you from the exterior, we do have this massive uh, sunroof up top. Let's actually close, uh, open this up. You can see just how far it goes back there, all the way back to the headrests of the passengers. So overall, this layout of this interior, again, I would like to have the darker tone, the sport trim, but if you want, if you're looking for a luxurious style with quality materials and good craftsmanship, this interior definitely has all of that with all the different textures, materials that we have in here, definitely gives you that more luxurious feel. So with that said, let's jump in, check out the back seat. If I fit behind there, being 6162, my driving position is set for the uh, driver's seat. We have the same beautiful materials here. You have this shade. If you want to pull that up, have more shade for the passengers. Same situation when it comes to textures and materials that we have in the front. Then the cup holder down here, infinity at the bottom looking nice. The seat overall in the rear looks very, very cool. Let's jump in here. Let's see the space that we have. I have plenty of leg room, even though this is not the biggest SUV, you can see just how much leg room I have. Headroom is fantastic as well. I mean, just look at this uh, carved out section for the glass up top, definitely helps with headroom here. All the way down here, you do have three zone, uh, three climate zones, two for the front and one for the rear as well, which is great. And in addition to that, these seats in the back are not ventilated, but they are heated for those cold winters. In addition, you also have two USBs, one USB-C and one USB regular, and these vents right there. The armrest also, of course, comes with a couple of cup holders. All right, guys, let's take the 2024 Infiniti QX50 autobiography, top of the line. Let's take it for a drive and let's see what this is all about. Uh, CVT gearbox. Uh, I have to, I'm not going to keep complaining about CVT gearbox because you know what I think about them already. If you're going to have a CVT gearbox, automatically the car is not going to be a sporty car. But I, with that being said, this CVT gearbox almost feels like a regular eight speed or something like that because this it doesn't when you floor it it doesn't rev like an old scooter that i used to have in high school this actually feels like it is shifting gears like a normal um, gearbox we're coming out here let's put it into sport let's see personal sport there we go and let's go uphill here and floor it let's see how this gearbox handles this So you can hear, it, it sounds almost like it's shifting gears, and I like that. It, it, this, I would say, doesn't necessarily feel like it has a CVT gearbox, and that is, of course, a good thing. 268 horsepower in this, and 0 to 60 in about 6.9 seconds, so it's not, the, it's not the quickest car out there, but it is very comfortable. Let's put it back, I, I'm, I'm just gonna put it back into, into uh, Eco or maybe keep it in standard because even though it is an Infiniti, it's supposed to be this more sporty Nissan uh, brand, this, this specific QX50 does not feel sporty. It's not a sporty SUV. This is more of a luxurious SUV and it makes more sense to have it in normal or maybe even eco than have it in sport. But if you go with the blacked out package, the sport package, I think it completely transforms 
the design of this car and just makes it feel like what I would ex expect an Infiniti to look like from the exterior design. Probably also made some changes to the interior and make that feel a little bit more sporty. But this coming out in 2019, does it hold up today? That's the problem here. That's the problem with the QX50 because if you think about the competition, you can get a GLC, Mercedes GLC. I reviewed that one absolutely loved the way the GLC drove. It was one of the best driving, most comfortable small SUVs in this segment. And go and check out that review here on the channel if you wanna, if you wanna hear my deeper thoughts on the GLC. And then you also have uh, the BMW X3, cheaper than this. But the one that I would buy in this segment for 60, exactly $62,000, that would be the uh, Volvo XC60 T8 Recharge Plus. That one comes out to $62,000, gives you 350 noise power. You also get a 35 mile of EV range only, and the design just feels, even though the XC60 is still also a little bit dated now, but the exterior design interior just feels more modern than this does. So let's come to a standstill here. And let's just quickly floor it to zero to 60, if we can get it up to 60 before that curve up there. We're up to 30, 50, and we're up to 60. So uh, it's a, de I mean, do you need more power in a, in a SUV of this size? I don't think so, 268 horsepower is totally fine. But again, having that 315 horsepower in the package that uh, Volvo delivers, with the X60, that would be my choice in this specific price range. I'm not sure who the buyer is for this car in 2024. In 2019, definitely it would be a you know good option. But in 2024, at this price range, honestly, I'm, I'm not sure who would buy the Infiniti QX50 today and not wait for the refresh. All right, so we're coming out to the highway here. Let's floor it on this on-ramp. Oh, that CVT gearbox just screams, howls, <laughs> revs like crazy. But again, it just feels it, feel, it feels better than a regular uh, other CVTs I've driven, that's for sure. All right, so we're cruising now in about 75, something like that. Uh, the ride is pretty comfortable. You do have some wind noise coming from up there. You also have some road noise from the tires. Uh, but other than that, if we, if we have it in and let's put it into eco and let's just cruise around here. Definitely a car that you can go long road trips, no problems at all. But I think the, uh, the, the main reason for that is going to be these seats. These seats are extremely comfortable and they're also ventilated on a hot day like today. Let's just turn on the ventilation. And I can, I can almost feel it blowing cold air on my lower back right now, which is great because usually ventilated seats they tend to have this sort of uh, not not function very well but these seem to do the job in a pretty good way thankfully for 2024 we do have wireless apple car apple carplay and android auto for this and that is a must if infinity want to stay competitive in this segment with a 2019 uh design so that is good news this setup here is very strange two completely different design languages for the top screen and the lower section here. This feels like it came from a different car than this section down here. And that is what happens when you have a car in production for this long, you need to keep updating it. It's starting to, uh, the new updates are starting to clash with the original design. And I think that's sort of what happened here. But I do like that we do have beautiful housing for the gauge cluster and that the tachometer speedometer are still analog. I don't mind that one bit. I think it actually looks more classy have it like this than having it be fully pixelated. Overall, I think the uh, 2024 QX50 uh, autobiography for $62,000, I think it's struggling in today's market uh, a little bit with the competition. It's starting to get up there in age. But if you are a massive fan of Infinity, uh, of Infinity and you just want a uh, SUV in this size, I guess then you would be the buyer of this car. But if you're looking for you know gen generally an SUV in this size those are the people that I don't think are going to opt for the QX50 and go for one of the competitors just because of the age 
of this thing. That's my review of the QX50. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.